somebody else when you're the not one, not the one on the firing line. You know, it's always easy to be the, the, the armchair quarterback. You know, when you're in your living room, you're not on the floor or on the field having to make the call. It's always easy to second guess, you know. And, um, you know, from my heart, those people who think they know when they don't know, you know, you deserve to be on the front line. You really do. You do. You deserve to be in the front line. You deserve to, to be attacked like you've attacked everybody else so that you know that you don't know what you're talking about. It's that simple. And that's exactly how I feel about it after all these years of taking crap and having crap thrown at me and at my family and at my children. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. And it, it's gotten so bad that, you know, if you were to ask me, would I ever do this again? Would I ever go public again? The answer is absolutely no. I would keep the information for myself, pass it on to my family, and tell the rest of humanity, forget it. Because it isn't worth it. It just isn't worth it. You know, look at your history on, on how you've, you've handled those who have tried to share wisdom. It isn't a good track record. So, but I wouldn't do it again. If I had to do it over, I wouldn't do it again. And that's what led to your five years where you... Nearly six, yes. Where you freeze contact with the Andromedans? Yeah. And what prompted you to begin contact with them again? What made the difference for you? What brought you back? Well, look at the condition of the world, and I'm a parent. I'm a parent. So this is about your children? Yeah. Yeah, plain and simple. All right, now come the easy questions. Don't who, say that. Who is humanity? Who is humanity? <laughs> oh, you know, that's an evolving question. Who are we? You know, what, what is our sum total? Um, you know, we've come from humble beginnings. Um, primarily a slave race mixed with uh, extraterrestrial genetic races, uh, other genetic races of extraterrestrial origin or other planetary systems. Um, been experimented on. Just, you know, that's, that's the $64,000 question. Who are we? I believe that's evolving um, as we are. What does it look like? You know, what does that look like? when we have fully matured. You know, what does humanity look like? And I believe that it will probably be one of the few true representations of the entire galactic family living together as one. Uh, that's honestly what I believe. And, um, you know, through our physical body types, through our, our skin color, through our, all of our genetics, you know, a remarkable potential. Um, you know, but we're evolving. We're moving closer to that. Um, You've also mentioned that some of us are from a higher frequency, a higher dimension. You've talked about the Patal. I was told that in the Andromedan perspective, and this information was given to them by, by more advanced races than their own, um, in in a harmonic or frequency density higher than theirs, that there is speculation that many of the souls on the planet come from a group soul called the Patal. And that group soul were also known in history, in antiquity, galactic antiquity, as the founders who had moved through all the dimensions through the different physicalities and evolve spiritually to get, I guess, to the highest level. And some have decided to leave eternity and fall back into the concept of time, which is where we are today, where allegedly they are today, let me put it that way, um, here to help uplift and change, you know, this harmonic, what we know as third density, and to move it forward 
and as we move forward it creates a graduational type of procession of uplifting of frequencies for other for, for the others as well um, it's it's an evolution and, and allegedly that's what they think um, you know that that's that's a very interesting subject and uh, you know, I know we're limited on time on the tape, but but you know, I've dealt with some of that already in in the earlier uh, talks. Let me ask you: uh, Some people would say that you know we're here because we've made mistakes in the past, and we're kind of like spiritual renegades, and this is our prison or this is our cell. We're relegated to this spot in the the galaxy on the outer fringes. Other people say we're slow learners. We're spiritual idiots. And we've got a lot to learn before we're allowed into this, you know, heart of the galaxy and mix with the other higher frequency races. What do you, what have you learned about that? Those concepts are those valid or invalid? Are they? What's your opinion? Well, I think if Earth is a prison, it's because we've we believe it's a prison. Um, but it could be that they're all right. <laughs> I mean. If this is a place where we create our own physicality and we create our own reality, then they're all right. You know, if you believe this is a prison for you, then, then you're right. It's going to be a prison for you. If you believe this is a paradise and a school and a place for you to learn lessons and evolve and to learn love, then it's going to be a school for you, a university, really. Um, you know, irregardless, we all know that it's a boot camp for the soul. You know, Earth is not easy. Um, I think it, the, the true test of Earth is that, yes, it's physical, but it's kind of like being in a mirror. You know, what you think is immediately mirrored back to you. You know, if, if, you, if you walk around and, you know, whining that you're the victim, you know what, you're right. You're going to be the victim. You will create that reality for yourself. If you walk around... Uh, projecting prosperity, you will create prosperity. It will come to you. You know, to me, it's, it's like a hall of mirrors. That's what Earth is. And uh, I, for one, feel extremely blessed to be here to learn these incredible lessons and to have these, these particular opportunities. You know, um, and I just wish more people looked at it that way. Um, because they, they, you know, when you get to that place, it's very self-empowering, you know, and uh, you know, you're willing to step up and do the things that you have to do. Okay. Now, I am very thankful for the, for the lessons that Earth has given me, um, but you know, in hindsight, you know, with all the things that we have to go through to learn, to to love, to feel, to be responsible, to to experience anger and hate and abuse of power and, and all those lessons that we all go through many lifetimes here would I add that additional class of you know dealing with an extraterrestrial race on a planet as paranoid as this and the answer is no now earlier you said that uh, you're convinced reincarnation is a reality in fact you were even given evidence of reincarnation by the Andromedans they showed you something when you were young uh, something about your your life history, your past. Can you share a little bit about that? And can you decide? Can you tell me a little bit about how our consciousness chooses what life or body to inhabit? And you have also talked about that Van Allen belt and that it plays a part in reincarnation as well in in terms of your understanding of, of it. Let's talk about reincarnation for a little bit. Tell me what you, what you feel about reincarnation. When I was a kid, um, they had put this cap. It was almost like a, a, a metallic type of a yarmulke on my head. And immediately monitors came out of, of a wall out of nowhere, and I started being shown scenes of lifetimes. And this information was coming out of my own head, even though I consciously had no idea or a way to even tap into it. But I knew it was me. I mean, I was emotionally involved with every scene that I saw, and I knew that it was me. And, you know, I, that's not something that I can explain to people. You either just know or you don't. 
Well, I knew that was me. 